Hello, my name is Lily Artizu Yellen. I'm a team member of Connections Official, a company that specializes in genealogical research services. And today I will review a study that was published last year on nature regarding the origin and diffusion of the Y chromosome haplogroup J1M267. As you are aware, research on chromosome Y has been essential to making significant advancements in the fields of phylogenics, human population history, genetic genealogy, and forensic science, among others. But why chromosome Y? Because unlike autosomes and the X chromosome, which get recombined in a generation before being passed down to the off screen, the Y chromosome is inherited almost unchanged from male to male practically indefinitely. Thus, contrary to the other chromosomes, which will contain a random mixture of genetic codes as they are passed down from generation to generation, a male's Y chromosome will be identical or nearly identical to that belonging to his father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and beyond for countless generations. Now, in 1995, Dorit et al. conducted a study of 38 men from different ethnic groups to analyze a 279 base pair intron located in the finger zinc gene of chromosome Y. The objective was to determine a possible polymorphic variation of this segment, specifically the absence of polymorphism. This particular segment was selected obviously because um, it is in the non-recombinant region of the Y chromosome. The study found no evidence of sequence variation across the men participating in the study. Those research findings supported the notion that all men alive today descend from a single man who was named Y chromosome Adam. So Y chromosome Adam is the male ancestor to all men alive today, and he lived approximately 270,000 years ago in West Africa. He was not the first man by any means, nor was he the only man alive at the time. However, his genetic heritage Haplogroup A is carried in all Y chromosomes today. In other words, he was the only male who had an unbroken line of sons through thousands of generations until the present time. Now, I mentioned haplogroup A, and what are haplogroups and how are they defined? A haplogroup includes all the male descendants of the first male who underwent a nucleotide polymorphism mutation on the non-recombinant non region of the Y chromosome. Since the SNPs are extremely rare, a mutation identifies a group who had a common ancestor over a period of tens of thousands of years. Therefore, each member of a haplogroup presents the same SNP mutation as his common ancestor. Now, before the Y chromosome consortium was formed, haplogroups were defined based on different nomenclatures. And in 2002, the Y chromosome consortium created a method that allowed for the standardization of the nomenclature that was used for the classification of the Y chromosome haplotree. Based on this system, haplogroups are defined by single nucleotide polymorphisms on the non-recombinant region of the Y chromosome. There are 18 major haplogroups or clades, which are designated by letters A through R. Subgroups have a numeric name or value, which follows the haplogroup letter. For example, if you look at haplogroup E, you can see that there is E1, E2, and E3. 
if a subgroup has subgroups, a lowercase letter is used, as in E3A and E3B. Furthermore, as subgroups continue to diverge, the sequence of number plus lowercase letter expands, as you can see here on this slide. Anyway, um, after the exodus from Africa, the evolution of chromosome Y uh, haplogroup J coincided with the occurrence of highly significant developments in the history of humanity. Modern humans started their journey from West Africa to Eurasia, thus expanding the colonization of different regions. Later, the Neolithic demographic transition gave origin to the first city-states and civilizations, writing, the use of metal making, and the emerging emergence of three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So a group of researcher, researchers said to reconstruct the Y chromosome haplogroup J1M267 phylogeny with 172 high coverage sequences of modern humans using close to 4,300 SNPs. The Y chromosome haplogroup JM304 split off from haplogroup IJM429 around 45,000 years ago. And it represents the major male lineage in West Asia today. And it has been found among hunter gatherers in Turkey, the Armenian highland, and Iran. It has been related to the spread of farming from the Near East to Europe, and it is frequently found in the Arabian Peninsula and Mesopotamia. Haplogroup J1M267 diverged from JM304 around 20,000 years ago at the last stage of the last glacial maximum, or immediately afterwards. It has been related to the spread of their rural economies in West Asia, where it originated, specifically in Syria, Turkey, Iran, and the Cyprus Mountains. As you can see on this slide, the distribution pattern of haplogroup J1M267 is characterized by two high-frequency regions. The first one is in the Northeast Caucasus, and the second one in the Arabian Peninsula, southern Mesopotamia, and the southern Levant. Now, the area between these two high frequency regions has a lower frequency but high genetic diversity. A unique SNP marker known as P58, which we will discuss in a little bit, defines the major branch. This branch is prevalent in the Arabian Peninsula, southern Iran, and the Levant. This slide shows an abbreviated timeline of some major events related to the divergence of J1M267 into additional groups. So as mentioned before, at around 20,000 years ago, the last glacial maximum occurred. This was a period when glaciers were at their thickest and the sea levels at their lowest. And sometimes during this period, J1 M267 diverged from JM304. Likely, this occurred in northern Syria, southern Turkey, and northern Iran. Then, about 7,000 years later, at least three branches of the haplogroup J1M267 diversified into J1B, F4306, J1A2, PH77 and J1A1AZ2359. The first two groups involve rare lineages, which are distributed among the Caucasus, the Armenian Highland, Iran, and Pakistan. Then during the early Holocene, about 9,500 years ago, another important branch of J1M267 haplogroup J1A181 P58 originated. 
During this period, agricultural development emerged in West Asia, and there was some level of migration to the southern regions. However, despite this migration, the population growth remained more or less limited. J1A1A1P58, this particular haplogroup, is prevalent in the Arabian Peninsula, southern Levant, and southern Mesopotamia. Now, if we look at about um, 7,500 years ago, J1A1A1A1AZ1853 diverged. And this happened in southern regions of West Asia. Most of the ancient members, um, based on the researchers' study, were found in Levant and Egypt. After the Neolithic age, around 6,500 years ago, haplogroup J1A1BZ18375 originated. Both frequency of modern variation and the phylogeny of this branch suggest an origin in the Caucasus or the immediate vicinity sometime during the Copper Age to the Bronze Age. This finding is consistent with the autosomal DNA analysis of the Anatolian Bronze Age individuals who trace about 32% of their ancestry to the Caucasus hunter-gatherers um, of the time. All Jewish lineages of the group J1M267 fall into this branch, which suggests their origin ultimately was in the Levant. It is surprising to find two Jewish or close to Jewish lineages in ancient Roman samples. This provides information potentially about the migration of the Jewish people, at least of the bearers of this haplogroup, group who traveled from the Levant to Europe via Italy. European haplogroup group J1 and 267 lineages coalesce to others after about 5,000 uh, years ago. This suggests that the ancestors of the current haplogroup J1 M267 migrated to Europe after the Neolithic and, the, and after the Bronze Age. This expansion of haplogroup J1 M267 took place over a long period of time spanning the Copper Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. During the Copper Age and the Bronze Age, migration across West Eurasia increased significantly. Now, as you can see on the map, um, you can appreciate the condensation of dots in the center of the screen where these haplogroups originated. However, as we look from um, west to east, we can see an expansion over time towards um, places like Pakistan and Mongolia, southern Russia, and eventually on the east side, um, Italy and Sicily. In conclusion, Y chromosome haplogroup J1 and 267 evolved in the northern parts of West Asia around the last glacial maximum. A limited number of founders migrated south to the Arabian Peninsula, the southern Levant, and southern Mesopotamia, where the J1A1A1P58 branch evolved in the early, early Holocene. Haplogroup J1M267 expanded during the Copper Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. This coincided with the spread of Afro-Asian languages combined with the diffusion of pastoralism in the desertic regions of West Asia. And lastly, modern members of um, the J1A1A1B1L817 branch are found among the Ashkenazi Jews and Central and Eastern Europeans.
Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope to bring you more current research soon. Thank you.